Today on the Ranting Weight Watcher. Skipping meals, helpful or harmful? Friday, you have reached episode 8 of the Ranting Weight Watcher. I am your host, Donato Russo. If you enjoy the show today, please like, share, comment, subscribe. If the podcast app you're listening to me on allows you to rate the show, please give me four-star, five-star rating, whatever in your heart to give me. Any rating is much appreciated. From wherever you're listening to me, from whatever country, I thank you for joining me on my journey. I appreciate you being with me and your support of the show. I hope you enjoy it. I think I got a good show planned out for you today. We're going to get right into it. This topic of uh, skipping meals, it's it's close to my heart, and I'll tell you why. Um, I've been on every thought pattern when it comes to this, you remember in my in my other episodes I've said I have been overweight all my life. So I have been through at forty two years of age at this point, I have been through every delusion of weight loss you can possibly go through. I have believed everything and tried I I would say close to everything. Um even I mean even the extreme ones. And I can't tell you how many times in my life where I just went through these these periods where I would skip meals, thinking it's no big deal to skip a meal, never realizing what it was doing to my body. We're going to get into a little bit of that today, of what skipping meals does to your body. But I have been of the mindset where skipping meals is no big deal. I have been of the mindset that skipping meals will help my weight loss. Now I'm of the mind of skipping meals is detrimental to that day's success. Because skipping a meal on one day is not going to uh, ruin your journey. But it can ruin a day in your journey. It can cause you, if every day was a battle you can cause one battle to be lost in your war that is your weight loss journey all by skipping a meal. We're going to get a little into that because, you know, it's very important. It's one thing to be on a weight loss journey. It's one thing to wake up one day and decide, that's it, I need to do something with my life here and I need to get healthy and get focused on myself. And... The idea is doing the work, whether it's the physical part of, you know, choosing what you eat and stuff like that, or the physical part of getting the exercise in, doing that is only part of the journey, right? Working on your mind is another part of the journey. And part of working on your mind is educating yourself. We must become students of what we are trying to do. It is very important. I have an article here published on November 4th, 2014 by Esther Crane titled, What Happens to Your Body When You Skip a Meal? We've all been there. In an effort to drop a few pounds fast, you consider skipping lunch, thinking you can ride out the hunger pangs until dinner. Or 
You make breakfast a measly glass of low-calorie green juice, assuming that the plants will provide the nutrients you're not going getting from your usual milk and cereal. But here's the thing. Dealing with hunger pangs and energy drain are only just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to what's going on in your body when you decide to forego a meal. Let's take a peek and see what happens. For starters, skipping just one meal causes your blood sugar levels to dive, or if it's breakfast, to never get out of the starting gate at all. Sugar is the fuel your body runs on. If it's not circulating in the right amounts, every organ in your body is affected, says Maggie Moon, a nutritionist based in Los Angeles. You generally feel tired and unwell overall. Also, without a new supply of calories, your system shifts into starvation mode in an effort to conserve energy. Your metabolism slows, so the food you do eventually take in isn't burned off very efficiently. Next, your brain takes a hit. Without a steady supply of nutrients, your intellectual and emotional functioning changes, says Moon. You're foggy, and you become moody and irritable. When you do eat again eight or so hours later, your body feels relief, but it's short-lived. Your metabolism will stay low since it doesn't know when the next supply of calories is coming, and your blood sugar takes a plunge again, ushering in the new low, energy, brain fog, and mood swings you've experienced all day. Keep the meal skipping thing up and your body might turn to your muscles as a fuel source further sinking your metabolism and sapping your strength. Bottom line, not only does skipping meals take a toll on your system, it conspires against you, setting you up for a slower metabolism and crazy hunger pains that are tough to resist giving into. The smart strategy? Lose weight by eating smaller, healthier meals throughout the day. Make sure what you do eat is high-quality, nutrient-rich food, Lean protein combined with carbs from whole grains and some monosaturated good fats, suggests Moon. Ramp up your workouts so you burn more calories as well. Losing pounds slowly by keeping your food intake up means your system will barely notice the difference and you'll also be less miserable in the process. I absolutely love this article <clears throat> because it's it's like everything I've ever believed you know so when I started back in 2019 January I started going so this was the mo this was the time right so there are so many times where you enter a weight loss program where you're not ready really mentally to do it right so you go in with all the motivation in the world and you fizzle out. You're like a firework, right? You shoot up into the sky and, and, you know, you're like the firework that's shooting up way, 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 way high. And then pop and just a bunch of lights and it goes away. And so many times in my life, I approached weight loss this way. You dive in, you know, light the wick and you're like, and, and you take off. You know nothing. You know nothing except maybe one or two, three things that is supposed to give you success. And when it doesn't, pow! And you fizzle out. So it's like, if you had the, if I had the education, if I found this article then, you know, out of all those other times, I'd be in a very different position I am in right now. I wouldn't be, I would have, probably found success a long time ago but i guess we all fight our battles for a reason right we all have to come to the place of where we had enough enough is enough it's time to make a change and that's i mean you can't bring anybody to that point no you no one could have brought me to the point of enough is enough i just kind of got there and it all came down to a picture uh, or, or my birthday picture that with my, I took with my daughter that really, really got to me, you know. 
So I made the change. And now I find an article like this. So as I'm going through all my processes, right, it's because I'm such an analytical thinker, I'm constantly thinking, how do I make this more streamlined? What do I need to change? How do I do it better? And in reality, the one thing I need to do more than anything else, I've, I've figured this out now, the one thing I need to do more than anything is educate myself. Educate myself on true nutrition, what it means to live a healthy lifestyle, what choices to make, what choices not to make, how everybody, how your body works with you and against you based on the myths and facts you learn throughout the, throughout, on your way, on your journey. And so this article, and I, and you know what, a future episode it's, it's too much to get into now. A future episode, I'm going to do all about the metabolism because I'm convinced this article alone has convinced me of what how the metabolism works way now, way more than I ever believed before. And we're going to get into that on a future episode when I can really dissect the met- metabolism and we can use the entire episode on that. That's what I want to do. I don't want I don't want to just squeeze it in and then I feel like the metabolism is such an important part of our journey and maybe maybe a third of us understand it. Or maybe a third of us just know what it is, right? But maybe uh, even less of that actually understand how to manipulate or work with your metabolism. And I think Based on the changes I made throughout this journey, so to get to me to today, I actually measure, I weighed in today, today's Saturday, um, I'm, that I'm recording this episode, uh, Saturday, October 10th, I weighed in today and uh, lost 1.6 this week, I'm down a total of 104.4 pounds in, since January 12th, 2019. And so when I when I look back now at the changes I've made to get to this point, a big part of it was when I started eating more times of the day and spreading my points out. Okay, because I used like I told you this before, I used to skip meals, especially on weekends. Weekends I skipped meals just because I wanted to save my points because I knew we were going out to dinner, whatever it was. So I would skip meals on purpose. And then I realized once I started implementing these things, I always start implementing the new changes I'm making during the work week because I know my work week is much more structured because I have to be somewhere for eight hours of the day and that's it, right? So I have to do my work within the confines of having to do a job. My work meaning my work toward my journey. And uh, that's how I implemented as much water as I'm drinking now. That's how I implemented my meals that I'm eating now. And everybody laughs at me because I eat the same thing meticulously. Uh, And I think that if they can grasp the fact that food is fuel and it doesn't matter. It's just fuel. It is this, when you go and, and you have to fill up the gas in your car, you look for the cheapest version of regular gas. I don't care what the gas station is. It could be like Happy Joe's gas station, 89 cents a gallon. And you're like, and then across the street is a Shell gas station and it's like $1.59 a gallon. And you're wondering, well, what's the difference? I'm going with the cheaper one. You don't, you don't think twice you don't think twice about that because you see the difference in the price, right? So the same, the same thing is in your body. The food going in your mouth is just the fuel. Everybody sees these things like chocolate cake or hamburger or fries. They're all treats and, you know, these are things you, you obsess over and you have to have them. No, it's just fuel. And all of these people that say you need to change up your your oh you got to change it up once in a while you got to change it up i have never 
changed. I'm here since January 2019. I have never changed up anything. Once I got my meal plan, once I got the regimen as to what went, what I wanted to eat and when I wanted to eat it, I've barely changed a, a single thing. Because I'm trying to adopt a mindset that food is fuel. It's not a way of life. It's not a treat. It's not a celebratory thing. It is just the fuel my body needs to keep me alive. Everything I do besides eat is the exciting stuff in my life, is the thing I live for. Hanging out and playing with my daughter, going out and doing things with my family, whatever it is. Those are the things we need to concentrate on, not the food we eat while we're doing all of that. We got the holidays coming up now and everything else. I, I think my journey has become, you know, I'm a very, what's the word I want? I fight against anything that doesn't make sense, right? So I go against the grain. Any, any situation you can give me, I will go against the grain. I often picked un, I often pick unpopular versions of a of a topic of conversation just to see how people react. I don't even have to believe in that side of the conversation. I choose it just to force everyone to see all of it. And that's the same thing. I, I think that with my weight loss journey, I, I think that I have adopted the mentality of I'm going to prove that you never need to change what you eat. I'm going to prove that and I'm going to make it to goal by never changing what I eat. At some point, I will eliminate something because you know what? As I lose weight, I'm going to lose points and certain things will become not worth eating anymore. And that's the idea. That's the idea. And that's when I I just recently eliminated a protein bar that I ate Monday through Friday. And I said, you know what? Not worth it anymore. Not worth the five points for that protein bar. Do I still have them in the house? Yes. And if I really feel like I need one, um, are they there if I need them? Yes, they're there. But now for the second week in a row, uh, Monday through Friday, it's not just part of the meal. Now it's something there in case I need it. Um, we're going to take a break. So stick with me and we'll come back after this. Hi everyone. I'm Donato Russo and I am the Ranting Weight Watcher. I would love it if we can connect on social media. If you're on Facebook and Instagram, look me up at the Ranting Weight Watcher. If you're on Twitter, at the Ranting WW. If you're already on Weight Watchers and you want to connect in the Connect app, search for at Ranting Weight Watcher. If you'd like to email the show, share your successes, share your failures, share your story in general, send me an email at the Ranting Weight Watcher at gmail.com. Most of all, if you're enjoying the show, Please like it, share it, comment, and subscribe. Now, back to the show. And we are back. Are you enjoying the show so far? I hope so. You know, it is so important grasping these little details. You may feel that this entire time you've been listening to me, it's just not that big a deal. But it's not until you hit that aha moment, it's not until that happens in your life, in your journey, that you're going to realize that my words, this entire time you've been listening to me, have weight. They mean something. And if if you never hit that aha moment, then I I almost feel bad for you because it's these things, when the scale's not moving, it's these things 
that are going to keep pulling you forward. It's these little details that you can concentrate on, something that you can grab hold of, a little detail, a little piece of data that you collected in your exercise, in your eating, whatever it is. This little piece of data that you can say, okay, that's something right there. I can make a change here and we'll see what happens. Because remember, I said it what in my previous episode, we're in this forever. That's got to be your mentality. If you're only in this to drop a few pounds and then to go back to life as usual, just stay at life as usual now and keep the extra pounds because you're only going to be back where you started. Adopt a healthy lifestyle to live it. Not to only live it temporarily. It makes no sense. So let's talk about now how can we prevent, how can we prevent skipping meals? Okay? So the first thing we need to do is remove the ideology that skipping meals is okay because it's not. There are too many things that go wrong in your body when you skip a meal. Okay? So anybody who thinks it's okay, if you still think it's okay after all of this that I've said today, then you can move on from what I'm saying uh, going forward if I haven't convinced you so far. But for everyone else, let's talk about now because it's all that's left at this point is when you skip a meal by accident, an unplanned event where you skip a meal because things are just happening. Life is just happening. And you know what? Life happens for everybody, right? So, You can become one of two people when life happens. You can become the person that bends over and takes it and compromises everything because of the circumstance. Or you can become the person that adapts and is ready to adapt at any life circumstance. So which one will you be? Because this is a choice you make on a daily basis. What you did yesterday doesn't mean anything anymore. It's gone. Yesterday is done. It finished at 11.59 last night. And what you did yesterday is meaningless today. Because you could do everything the opposite today and ruin everything you did yesterday anyway. You make choices every day, every minute, every hour, every second of your life. You make choices. And they may seem insignificant when you're making them. But in the broad scheme of things, they all add up. And everybody gets handed circumstances in life. You can't tell me otherwise. And it's about what you do to handle these circumstances. Right? So now there are things you can have. You can have them on hand. Now, if you know, okay, let's say I'm going to use myself as an example. I know that... Saturday, Sunday, more so Saturday than Sunday, was the day I would skip a meal. So now we're going to skip over the time where I voluntarily skipped meals to save points for dinner. We're going to skip over that time period because that was just stupidity at its finest when I did stuff like that, okay? Knowing what I know now. So we're going to go to the point where it started happening to me accidentally, right? So now let's say a Saturday comes... And we are, uh, it, we, we have errands to run, okay? Now, if I leave the house and just run the errands with taking no consideration for the time, for the uh, position you are at that point of the day, right? So let's say, okay, you ate breakfast, right? And it is close to noon, and you're about to have, you're going to need lunch at some point, right? So if you don't want to be in the position to make a bad choice for lunch because you know you're going to go out to eat for dinner, then you, you have the opportunity to make some choices here. And now what choices can you make? You can pack some stuff that you can keep in the car. Stuff that won't go bad if your car is hot or whatever, right? Protein bar, uh, you know. I just got rid of them in my daily life, but they're still in the house, so I can easily take it 
put it in my glove compartment of the car, and this way, if I'm out on the run, and I know, okay, it's 2 o'clock, if I don't eat something now, I'm either going to be starving at dinner, or I'm going to pig out at some fast food restaurant, because it's what I need. I, I'm hungry and I'm and I want to eat. And I'm going to make choices I don't want to make because I know I'm going out to eat tonight. So I could throw a protein bar in the glove compartment. I can. It doesn't have to be a protein bar either. I mean, you could throw an apple. You can have an apple in there. You can have uh, uh, some baby carrots. Whatever it is. These things they can last in the car. Uh, at least I believe they can. I mean, you, you, we're talking about running errands here. How long are you going to be out? If you if you think I'm crazy, grab a thermal lunch bag or whatever and throw keep that in your car and put some put an ice block in it to keep the thing uh, to keep the apple cool to keep the carrots cool whatever it is. And if you're moving around and you see it's approaching two o'clock, you grab that apple and you eat the apple. You grab the baby carrots and you have the baby carrots. And it's going to be something. It's going to be substance that you've taken in. It's not going to be that you skipped a meal completely. You had something. And more importantly than anything, you've kept your metabolism going. And that's the key. That's the key. More than anything else is we're going to get to this at some point, whether it's next week or the week after, whatever it is. We are going to get into an episode about the metabolism and how it works, and what we need to do to keep it going. Because I'm, I'm very, pa- that's another thing I'm passionate about, is keeping that metabolism going. <clears throat> so, we can keep apples in the car, you know, in a thermal bag, we can keep baby carrots, we can have a protein bar in the glove compartment. Let's take it on a work day, right? Let's take it to a, to a weekday. It doesn't have to be a weekend thing that you might need this extra boost. Some of you out there, you eat breakfast at whatever time. Let's say, I'm going to throw a number out. I'm going to say 8. 8 a.m. you're eating breakfast. And by noon, 12.30, you're eating lunch. So we're talking about four hours of time uh, between breakfast and lunch, okay? And then you're driving home and you go home and you're preparing dinner and you start to pick on the food that you're preparing. This is probably the worst thing you could possibly do, right? You're, you're, so, you're starving at that point. You're so, you're so hungry that you're staring at the food you're creating for your family, whatever you're doing, Right? Let's say uh, it's something you can pick on while you're doing it. Right? And and you start tasting. And you're like, oh, it's no big deal. But all in the end, it all adds up. In the end, it's all going in your stomach. (laughs) It's all calories, right? It's all going to get absorbed at some point by your body. Those calories are not going into some mysterious wasteland that because you're standing up while you're doing it, you know, some magical place. It's going into your body and your body's going to have to get rid of it by burning it, whatever, or storing it. Okay? So now, how can we prevent that? How can we prevent you picking while you're cooking? So, if we analyze it and we say, okay, you only went from four hours from 8 to 12, but then 12 and then you leave work 5, 5.30, that's five hours. So what can we add? We can add a protein bar at three. Now you're on the commute home and you don't feel so bad. You can add a protein bar at three. You can have those baby carrots just the same. You can have an apple at three. It doesn't have to be a protein bar. I go go to the protein bar because I know in my mind I'm so, so conscious about going after protein first. Because protein sustains me, and it would sustain anybody. Anybody who would tell you different is a little bit crazy. Your body takes longer to break down protein 
than it does anything else, literally anything else. So when you when you're this is why high protein, uh, low carb diets are popular. Because you're gonna the idea is that you sustain yourself so you don't feel hungry. Right? And so if we can just grasp that, these little situations, these little changes we can make to prepare ourselves. Because if you feel prepared for any situation life can give you, you're going to make wonderful choices. You're going to make choices better than you ever made choices before. And that's the key. The key is you are not just here to lose weight anymore you are here for the rest of your life to be healthy to be better than you ever were and anything you need to do to learn has to become the focus if you really want to live a healthy lifestyle become a student of that healthy lifestyle learn all the tips and tricks seek out the information it cannot just be what you someone is willing to present you. It has to be more than that. It has to be more. You have to go after. You have to live this life. You have to sleep this life. You have to eat this life. Everything has to be about being healthy. Every choice you make has to be about being healthy. It may sound stupid, but it does. You have to. It has to be the most important thing to you in your life. And until it's that, until it's that, it'll, it will only be, you will only get so far in your success. So the more important it is to you, decide today, is the juice worth the squeeze? Is the juice worth the squeeze? Are you worth it? If you didn't think you were worth it, you wouldn't be listening to this right now. I think you're worth it. I think I'm worth it. So we have to become students of this life we're trying to live. And we don't just stumble into information. We have to go after it. We have to be like the lion hunting the gazelle. Be the lion. Don't be the gazelle. You don't want to be running and then just happen to stumble into it. You want to be after it, actively hunting that information. Do this, become a student of what you're trying to do, and you will find success. And you'll achieve greater things than anybody. I love each and every one of you. God bless you all.